What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. This is episode number 235. We start today's episode off by seeing that the Portuguese FA have now replaced Ronaldo with Lurie Madeiros into our squad of course because in the last episode Cristiano Ronaldo decided to retire mid-tournament. I think that's the first time that must have ever happened ever. I mean ridiculous isn't it? Ronaldo currently top scorer at the World Cup and as things stand you definitely say we're one of the favourites to win this World Cup besides you know what I've had enough of this to be honest I'm going home and I'm taking my football boots with me, I'm no longer going to be playing football ever again, and it's just ridiculous, isn't it? I'm so frustrated because the whole point of me staying with Portugal and the whole point of me playing this World Cup was so I could hopefully lift the trophy with Ronaldo, and now he's decided to retire mid-tournament. I didn't even get to replace Ronaldo in my squad either. The Portuguese FA did it for me. That was one of the most frustrating things, but anyway, despite the fact that Portugal uh, are now going to be without Ronaldo, I still have to play in this tournament, and the first game in the round of 16 was against Egypt here, and the first chance would fall from this free kick, but Bruce Rumor's strike is really well saved by the goalkeeper. So, to be honest, now with Lurie Madeiros here and Ronaldo now retired, I'm not really that bothered anymore. You know, in the group stages, I was like, yeah, this could be really good fun. Hopefully trying to get Ronaldo uh, the World Cup for the first time ever because I'd love to see him do it in real life, but I don't think it's ever going to happen. And maybe it would be good to see him lift it in the game, at least for me. But uh, now he's just retired mid-tournament. I've just i sort of completely lost interest, to be honest. But even so, I'm still going to be doing, doing my best to, uh, to try and win the World Cup. And we take on Egypt for this round of 16 games. And it was one of those games where I couldn't really see, you know, sort of break through the back line. And so many chances really fell to us. But all of the shots were quite poor. And the goalkeeper for Egypt did make a few saves here and there. But they were quite comfortable saves, you know. And I couldn't really get it sorted in this game. And that's why I went into extra time. I, I guess I wasn't really sort of in the mood to play anyway. That's why I wasn't really going full throttle. But still, it was nil-nil. We did go into extra time. And the first chance of extra time would fall to us in the 105th minute here. Uh, so we go down the left hand side. It's a really good chance as uh, Araujo Capella goes forward, but it's a good save by the goalkeeper. A really good double save, I should say. And it is cleared away. So still 0 0 as things stood. And I just couldn't seem to get myself the opening goal in this game. And there would be a chance here in the 110th minute as Fernandez goes forward. But again, the goalkeeper makes a really good save. And as Clive Tilsley said this. And the shadow of the penalty shootout is beginning to loom over this game. He made a very good point that with just a few minutes to go in extra time, there was a good possibility that we would be going to penalties. And I thought, I've got one more sub to make. And do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to see if I can pull a Louis van Gaal here and see if it works out for me. Because, of course, in the World Cup in real life in 2014, we saw Louis van Gaal and Evelyn sub off Sillison, bring on Tim Krul for the penalty shootout. And, of course, it ended up working out against uh, Costa Rica, I think it was, if I remember correctly. So I thought, I'll do the same thing. See if I can pull a Louis van Gaal and see it work out for me as well. I I brought off Anthony Lopez and I brought on Jose Sa and I thought maybe because he's taller he'll have a better reach on him I don't know maybe that'll be a good tactical decision and as you can see by the stats I couldn't believe I didn't win the game in 120 minutes but still we went to penalties and uh, Bruma would stand up and take the first one for us but unfortunately it was saved by the goalkeeper so what a terrible start for me I missed the first penalty Hassan would then step up for Egypt a good chance for them to take the early advantage but Jose Sa pulls off the save so goalkeeper sub maybe it's going to work out for me. A pretty easy save, but even so, Araujo Capella would then stand up and take the next one. We go for the same corner, but this time it's a different result because we do get the goal. It's 1-0 and we have the advantage. Carabia would then stand up for Egypt, their captain against Jose Sa, and he hits the post. Jose Sa went the right way as well, and he must have put him off. So, no penalty scored from two from Egypt, and Andre Gomez then stands up and takes one for us, and he does score despite the Egyptian goalkeeper going the right way. So, it is 2-0 as things stand. Salah really needs to score for Egypt. Egypt, the Chelsea player, he really does need to put us in the back of the net, and unfortunately he does. He sends Jose Sa the wrong way, and it is 2-1. So Egypt back in this penalty shootout, but Fernandez can give us the two-goal cushion once again. Fernandez against the goalkeeper, and he just about does it. The goalkeeper got a hand on it, but he couldn't stop it. So 3-1, and a good chance for El Nani to get Egypt back in the game, and he really does need to score it, to be honest, against Jose Sa, and he just about does. I dived the right way with Jose Sa, but I can't keep it out, and it is 3-2, but if Lurie Madeiro scores this one, we go through, and he does. The goalkeeper's rooted to the spot. Lurie Madeiro scores, and we are through to the World Cup quarterfinals. So, you know, <laughs> did it work out? Did it work out playing Jose Saez, the goalkeeper, for the shootout? I don't really know. He saved one penalty. He, uh, you know, he dived the right way for a couple others as well. But uh, I don't think it really mattered, to be honest. But it was still fun to do it. And, uh, yeah, we get ourselves through the penalty shootout, and we are through to the World Cup quarterfinals. So, yeah, I mean, it, it was kind of 
funny to do it to be honest I just thought I'll do it for a laugh and see if I can pull it off but uh, yeah I don't think it would have mattered to be honest had I played Anthony Lopez or not but uh, even so we take on Italy for the World Cup quarterfinals here hoping to get ourselves into the semis and as we look at Italy's squad there is one player that I'm currently thinking about signing in the summer that's their goalkeeper Farinetti who's currently at Chelsea he's a new gen or a regen who does look very very good on the game so um we take on Italy and the first chance game would actually fall to us in the 13th minute and it would also be the, four, uh, the first goal as well. Nelson Oliveira robbed his man, went through one on one and finessed it in off the far post to make it 1-0 to Portugal. So perfect start, 13 minutes in and we're already in front and in the 18th minute we could have made it 2-0 here as uh, Guerrero goes down the left hand side, offloads it towards his man, he keeps on going, crosses, uh, sorry, uh, does he cross the ball in? Yes he does, Raf crosses the ball in, Broom wins the header but he puts the ball over the bar and it goes out harmlessly for a goal kick and and in the 34th minute, another good chance here as Italy failed to get the ball away. It comes to Rafa. He finds his man who strikes it, but Ferranetti makes a really, really good save here. And he also gets across to deny Rafa from scoring the follow-up header. So, still Portugal 1, Italy 0 as things stead. And uh, we were playing very, very well. But uh, in the 36th minute, Calderoni finds Verratti. He finds Balotelli. Mario Balotelli plays it through. And unfortunately, it's a real, real howler by myself. Though I gave the ball straight to Verratti. And the PSG midfielder put it into the empty net. It was so frustrating. Yes, I play out from the back all the time and I know sometimes I do get it wrong and it must be really frustrating to watch but you know that's just one of those moments where as soon as I press triangle I knew I got that wrong and unfortunately Verratti has a simple finish and Italy are back on level terms. They almost made it 2-1 there but uh, thankfully for us it was a good save by Anthony Lopez and it is still 1-1 and in the 70th minute Mario Balotelli hits the worst free kick I've ever seen on FIFA that was unbelievably poor I know free kicks aren't easy on this game but even so I cannot believe how bad that was and from that goal kick Jao Cancelo gives the ball to Bruma here Bruma gets past his man with the roulette and finds Bernardo Silva Bernardo Silva plays a quick 1-2 with Nelson Oliveira goes down the right hand side takes on De Chilio, gets onto his left foot with the fake shot and shoots but Ferranetti makes a really good save and then dives on the rebound. So, still Portugal 1, Italy 1. And in the 75th minute, Bernardo Silva finds Jao Cancelo out wide. It's our right back for Millwall, who skips past his man with a double step over. Keeps on going, keeps on going and shoots, but it goes over the bar and out for a goal kick. And that was how the game would finish. So, again, unfortunately for us, we would go into extra time. And i got to be honest, in extra time, literally nothing happened. So, as the game was being closed out again, I thought I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to bring on Jose Sar for Anthony Lopez. It worked out in round of 16 so will it work out in the quarterfinals who knows maybe it will maybe it won't I don't know but uh, you know Louis van Gaal probably missed a trick in the semi-finals of the World Cup by not subbing off Sillison for Cruel again so I thought I'm not going to make the same mistake I'm definitely going to uh, make sure I do bring on the goalkeeper for the penalties and it was a shootout and the first penalty will be taken by Bruma who sends Ferranetti a transfer target in mind the wrong way really good opening penalty and then Jorginho would then stand up for Italy against Jose Sarr could he save the first penalty like in a round of 16 yes he could because again Again, it's a chip down the middle and it is a simple save for my goalkeeper. Marcos Lopez could then make it 2-0 from the spot and he does. Ferranetti dives the right way but he must have been weighed down by the trousers there because he couldn't get a hand to it. And it is still 2-0 to us and Destro would then stand up for Italy. Could he score against Jose Sarr? Well, unfortunately... Maybe I should have kept Anthony Lopez. What on earth happened there? He makes the save and then he just watches the ball cross the line after the deflection. So it's 2-1. Thankfully for us though, Nelson Oliveira would then make it 3-1 from the spot. So it's a 100% record for us here. El Shirawi would then stand up and take it against uh, Jose Sarr. Could he make it 3-2 and get Italy back in the game? He stands up, stutters and puts it down the middle. So good penalty by El Shirawi and Italy are back in this shootout. It was uh, Araujo Capella to take the next one for us, the number 7. And he sends Ferranetti the wrong way. So, four penalties converted from four taken. Really good record from us so far. That means Verratti must score or Italy are going home in the World Cup. And unfortunately for us, he cheekily puts us down in the middle with no power. And it is 4-3. So, Italy back in the shootout. Andre Gomez could win the shootout for us here, though. But unfortunately, that's why I never like to go down the middle. Because Ferranetti stands still and makes the save. So, 4-3. But Italy still need to score this one. It's Kessarelli against Jose Sarr. And he blazes it over the bar. And that is how the game would finish on the shootout. We are through to the World Cup semi-finals. And again, I don't really think the goalkeeper sub made any difference. 
difference whatsoever, but it was still fun to do it, and we won the shootout, so I guess it doesn't really matter, but uh, anyway, yeah, we're through to the semi-finals of the World Cup, and uh, we also saw in that game that Rafa pulled his hamstring, I couldn't find out where that happened, so I couldn't find it in the footage, but uh, our winger Rafa pulled a hamstring, he'll be out for three weeks, which means he will miss the rest of the tournament, but I don't really care, to be honest, because we've got better options, and uh, he's not really that amazing anyway, but anyway, we take on Chile. For the World Cup semi-finals, we take on the side we previously managed internationally, and yeah, I was really, really excited for this game because, of course, taking on our former nation that we used to manage in the World Cup semi-finals, we'd also be facing one of our players at Millwall, the cult hero of the series, Brian Carrasco, playing for Chile in the uh, the right wing slot. That was absolutely awesome to see. So we'll be taking on Carrasco and his Chilean players here in the World Cup semi-final. And the first chance would fall to us here as uh, Vidal gets onto the ball and plays it forward. But as we make a challenge here with Bruma, he collects the ball and skips past his man. And Chile are all at sea already because they've got no defenders running backwards. Uh, sorry, they're, all their defenders are running backwards. There's no one back in time to defend Bruma's cross. He plays it across the far post. And Luri Medeiros has a simple header. Two minutes, 57 seconds in. And we are already in front in the World Cup semi-final. It is a simple, simple finish for Ronaldo's replacement. And we are 1-0 up early on. But just a few minutes later Chile come forward here and Alexis Sanchez finds Vidal I can't make the challenge of Andre Gomez Vidal wins it back goes down left hand side crosses the ball in and Anthony Lopez I don't know how we didn't get to that ball but unfortunately he didn't and it's a simple finish for Castillo who turns it in and makes it Chile 1 at Portugal 1 so unfortunately for us we are back on level terms after a very very poor piece of goalkeeping there from our keeper and it is 1-1 in 19th minute a good chance to make it 2-1 here Bruma comes forward but unfortunately it's a good stop by the goalkeeper and Chile managed to get the ball away and in the 29th minute Ilari gets on the board our centre back and plays a good free ball to Nelson Oliveira he finds Bruma it's a really good chance for the pair player one two Chile failed to deal with it Nelson Oliveira back heels it to Andre Gomez but it's another great save by the goalkeeper and it is still one apiece so all the goalkeepers I've faced in the knockout stage have been really really decent and it's still one on and in the 35th minute you see Veloso get on the ball for Chile and cross the ball in and Brian Carrasco almost scores against me there but thankfully he puts his shot wide and it goes out for a goal kick and in the 62nd minute a really good chance for us to make it 2-1 Nelson Oliveira finds Bernardo Silva quick little fake shot plays the ball forward towards Nelson Oliveira running clear but again uh, we can't score the goal because it hits the post and we can't turn in the rebound either so unfortunately for us as this shot is well saved by the goalkeeper it is still 1-1 and we couldn't see the final back of the net for a second time in this game despite all the pressure and in the 76th minute another good chance Fernandez skips, pa uh, skips past his man keeps on going and eventually takes aim but again, we're denied by the Chile goalkeeper. Really good stop, and it's turned behind for another corner. And we just can't score that second goal. And in the 90th minute, the last chance would fall to us. Bruma takes on Toro, beats him with a verbal spin, takes aim. But again, we are denied by the brilliance of the Chile goalkeeper. And the game would go into extra time. So the third time in the knockout stages out of three, we go into extra time. So frustrated. But in the 94th minute here, we wanted an early start. And as Fernandez goes down the left-hand side, he plays a great through ball towards Araujo Capella, he gets onto the ball, nice little fake Rabona, then a lovely piece of skill, gets onto his right foot and strikes it, and although the goalkeeper saves it, Bruma follows up, makes it 2-1, and we are in front in this game, just 5 minutes into extra time, so the perfect early start, and in the 105th minute, you see us get on the ball again here, directly from kickoff in the second half of extra time, Fernandez finds Bruma, quick little step over, goes down the right hand side, plays the ball inside towards Luri Medeiros, he chips the ball over the goalkeeper, it's 3-1 to Portugal, and we are surely going through to the World Cup final now as we have that two goal cushion in extra time and Bruma's got to be the player of the tournament what a great tournament he's had and uh, well it was time for Chile to get themselves a consolation goal in 115th, 115th minute and guess who scored the goal? It was Brian Carrasco, yeah. So if he's not scoring the goals for us all series long, he's scoring against us. So Brian Carrasco scores. And I guess I was really pleased to see that. A late consolation goal for Chile. But it doesn't matter. We are through to the World Cup final after beating Chile by three goals to two. That will be a live commentary and that will be the next episode. So as always, guys, a big thank you for watching the video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed the episode, please leave a like. And I'll see you for the next episode very soon, which will be the World Cup final with Portugal against Germany.